Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 6th of September 2011. The Sun's high level of activity has continued with an M5 flare today. But before we get to seeing where that came from and why, let's deal with our trivia question. 489 years ago this day, the last remaining ship of Magellan's fleet returned to Spain after circumnavigating the globe. So today's trivia question is, what was the name of that ship? The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met we've had 10 sea flares and an M5 flare and possibly a second M flare. Now why only possibly a second M flare? Of course, the second event occurred during one of the data gaps that I talked about yesterday. So we'll never actually know how big it was. When you look at the one minute data, you see that the flare is coming down from about the C9 level. However, that implies that it was higher before that during the gap. So I'm inclined to believe this was also an M flare. So let's take a look at the sunspot regions and see what's going on. The M5 flare was officially tagged to region 1283, which is the largest region on the disk. We lost regions 1277 and 1282 over the west limb last night. However, I think the second M flare was from region 1282. More on that later. We have two unnumbered regions, one small one in the southwest and a huge spot coming over the northeast limb, which I'll show you in detail in a few minutes. So let's go through the regions in order, starting with region 1281. This is the small region in the southwest and seems to have decayed somewhat overnight. However, there is a new small region coming up to its north and east, which you can just see near the top of the lower frame. It's a relatively small region, and I don't think it's going to amount to much. Next, let's deal with region 1283. According to the NOAA area numbers, that region has grown by about 16% in the last 24 hours. However, when I look at the spots, I see there's been some growth around the leader spot, but some decay in the trailing part of the region. Next, let's take a look at region 1287 down in the southeast. Although the area assigned to it by NOAA has not changed in the last 24 hours, I think I see significant decay, particularly in the trailer part of the region. Now let's take a look at the new region coming over the northeast limb. In this picture you can just see the, the remnants of region 1288 in the bottom right hand corner. Uh, that region has decayed quite significantly and I think it will be gone in the next 24 hours. But what we can see from the region in the northeast is that there is a huge leading spot coming over the limb. But it's too early to see what, how many other spots are involved in this region and we'll have a better idea of that tomorrow. Solar activity is at a moderate level at the moment but I expect it to decline unless this new region coming over the northeast limb proves particularly lively. So now let's take a look at the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the white light and magnetic data from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. I'd suggest concentrating on region 1283 near disk center as the most interesting region and it's too soon to see any development in the region in the northeast. Once again we have a paucity of data from the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Not sure what's going on there. However, I've taken a couple of still frames from the 304 transition region movie. The first shows the actual M5 flare from region 1283 and the other one shows what I think is the remnants of the other M flare on the uh, northwest limb. I'll show the transition region and the lower temperature coronal movie just for completeness, but I don't think you'll see a lot there. In the high temperature coronal image from the SXI instrument on GOES, you can see how bright the region of the northwest limb is, which is why I think that that region is the one that produced the second M flare. Once again, in the coronagraph data from SOHO, I challenge you to follow all the coronal mass ejections that we're seeing. Unfortunately, at the time of the M5 flare, there's a data gap, which may be filled in later. However, there's a beautiful coronal mass ejection from that uh, second M flare off the northwest limb. You can see from the ACE data that the coronal wind temperature has remained relatively constant. Velocity peaked around about 450 kilometers per second, but is now easing back down again. And uh, about uh, six or eight hours ago, the uh, density of the solar wind dropped precipitously to much less than one proton per cubic centimeter. The high energy electron flux has remained relatively constant and we have, as a result of the M5 flare, a fairly significant uh, proton event underway at the moment. The auroral zone looks fairly agitated at the moment, however the KP index is varying just between 0 and 2, which is relatively quiet. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the C1 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 102, 
Radio sun intensities remained relatively constant at 119 solar flux units. Solar wind speed has increased slightly to 440 km per second, but with a density of much less than one proton per cubic centimetre, and geospace conditions are generally quiet. My 24 hour forecast is that sea flares are likely, M flares are still possible, but X flares are increasingly unlikely. The sunspot number will remain relatively high. CMEs are quite likely. The solar wind speed will drop lower and we've got a possible chance of a geomagnetic storm. Looking at the composite coronal image, we see that then once this new region has moved on to the northeast limb, there's nothing major due back for at least four or five days. So if you'd like to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see some earlier editions of the sun today or some of my other videos, please go to my channel, they're all listed there. If you want to keep track of what's going on in the sun, subscribe, you'll be more than welcome to do so. Uh, oh yes, uh, the trivia question. The one surviving ship from Magellan's fleet was called the Victoria. And uh, just as a little footnote to history, Magellan wasn't on that ship. He died in a battle off the Philippines. So on that cheery note, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.